nice evening from my side also. Um, it's, a, it's the first time that I speak in this office for Ocean Protocol. I, I've done this multiple times for different, uh, for different companies, but this time for Ocean Protocol. Uh, I joined Ocean Protocol <laughs> mid, mid of this year, in the summer of this year. So, uh, yeah. Whoever participated in one of my talks knows that they are always interactive. So, who has read the white paper of Ocean Protocol? Okay, who, who knows the architecture of Ocean Protocol? Okay. Because my talks, my talks can, can be extended to a specific extent. Depends on what the, what the audience wants to, to know. And questions are always recommended. Just, just ask if you have, have questions. So that's what Ocean wants to build. This is what we are building right now. We want to... So who knows the general uh, claim of Ocean? Who knows what Ocean is about? Okay, there, there is just start, just start very at the beginning. So Ocean is about getting big data closer to AI. So most of, of corporates and most of uh, companies have big data. And those startups that want to build AI don't have data. And the idea of Ocean Protocol is to get the data closer to AI, to accelerate creation of AI. And this is what, we, what we're doing. We are, this this uh, diagram has to be read from the, from the bottom to the top. We have data owners on the, uh, on the bottom and we have service owners on the bottom. So basically, this is, no, it's not. this is data and this is AI. And we, we try to connect those two uh, parties with Ocean Protocol. Uh, we are heavily using blockchain for doing this because of, uh, yeah, of the distributed ledger uh, thing that is, that is yeah, a blockchain. Um, to yeah to guarantee audity uh, to guarantee that the data is audit audible no <laughs> can be audited so um, there is a there is a concept of keepers that basically holds the the smart contracts and is the blockchain right now we have verifiers that can verify data the quality of the data. And we have curators that can say, yeah, this data is, uh, could be better than the other because of, of X. And at the very top, we have data scientists that use the data to train AI. This is what our architecture look like. looks like. We have a front end uh, right on top that is um, yeah, usable by a browser. Or we have data science tools that is usable by, uh, by data scientists or a command line or whatever, and we have a provider that is basically unlocking the data, and we have a keeper that is storing all the information about who purchased what asset, who owns what uh, asset. And I'm going to uh, be talking about the very, very bottom. There is a, there's one sentence here or one, one word called secret store. This is what I'm going to talk about today. And this is what a secret store looks like. Crazy. Uh, no. We have a challenge. We want to, to use strong encryption on um, data that is transferred from one party to the other. Um, yeah, because I don't want to get my data stolen or I don't want to yeah, leak data in some, some cases. And we are using <clears throat> a system that is called secret store that is basically based on, um, on blockchain technology, like uh, a BFT, a Byzantine Fault Tolerance Protocol. Um, <clears throat> it's the same technology as, as blockchain, but it's not a blockchain. It's a, it's a method of, using, uh, of, of reaching consensus without blockchain, without mining, without, without blocks, basically. And on that side, there is a, there is a Keeper network that is connected to our secret store to, to validate that yeah, I can unlock a specific, specific uh, amount of data because I, I purchased it. And the secret store is a, is a decentralized uh, application. That means it contains multiple nodes that have to reach consensus to, to get out the, the key of those 
secret store. So basically, a secret store is a, is a storage of crypto keys that is decentralized. This is the definition of BFT. It's from Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, basically, it's, it's about building a system that is, that is fault tolerant, where different nodes can be shut down or interrupted or corrupted, but the system will, will maintain itself. It's like, yeah, what, what blockchains are doing. And this is used in a, in a secret store. And this is what it looks like, really. So, I mean, this is a swarm of birds. And this is the same technology as, uh, as yeah, reaching consensus. Because if I corrupt one of those birds and, and say, fly to the other direction, it will not change the, the whole swarm. But this swarm reaches consensus somehow. And that's, that's the protocol. And yeah, basically, this is how the secret store works. So none of the birds has, has your keys, but all of the birds together have, has your key. Are there, before, before I go to, to showing code, is there any, are, are there any questions or anything to add, to remove, if someone wants to drink? How oh, did you rate a purchase, like a certain storage, decentralized storage? And I paid for that, right? <coughs> so how is the, the key plus a land rewarded from this payment? And is it, what, what currency can you use there? Everything that is, that is inside of Ocean Protocol is using Ocean tokens to yeah to stake on on specific assets or to buy assets or to to sell assets you sell assets for ocean tokens um, and there is right now um, we are running on on ethereum blockchain and there is no specific uh, reward for for running an ethereum node there are no ocean tokens for in, running an ethereum node but there will be uh, incentivization for specific tasks in the in the ecosystem. So, for for example, I was showing the concept of, of curators. So, if you rate uh, a data set, if you say I, I have seen this, this data set and this contains good data or bad data, and you are right, then you will be incentivized with Ocean tokens. So, there is an in incentivization model based on um, on that network uh, on that protocol. But how does that feed to the feedback to the keepers? I, I don't, I'm quite getting across. <coughs> sorry, um, how does that feedback to the? I mean, if I buy a terabyte, let's say, so uh, somebody's going to provide that storage. A lot of them have to provide that storage, yeah. and it's a secret. It's a secret storage. So for now, I don't want anybody to have a look at those data. Yep. Um, who gets rewarded? There, there is no reward for running the secret store right now, mm -hmm. because we are running it, or it is, it is run right now. Um, but there, there are concepts of incentivize, incentivizing people to run parts of the keeper. How many nodes do you have? Uh, right now, we are. Uh, <coughs> We've implemented this like two weeks ago, and we are running on a on a um, Docker on a Docker server with a few nodes that only we own. So it's not public. It's not you cannot join this secret yeah, store I somehow. Know, there's, there's, there's not much. How, how many nodes? Five, ten, three, twenty. Three, right now, because it's the minimum you you need. So what we what we try to do is we try to uh, start with as least resources that we should. Yeah, use, and then we can we can make this as big as we want. So it could be a hundred nodes or one hundred thousand or whatever. But right now it's three. What we did, um, we set up this the secret store, deployed it in, uh, in Docker, and and run it in the cloud, and we we created the library and it's called Secret Store Client. It is uh, available on, on GitHub. And we, we condensed the whole concept of secret store into, into two methods. One is encrypt document and one is decrypt document. So basically, you need the ID of the document 
your password and your public key from uh, from your Ethereum address, and then you can sign um, sign a document and encrypt it. And the encrypt method would would yield uh, the encrypted document as uh, as a hex string. And if you want to decrypt it, then you would get your document back. Question. Where is the encryption happening? The encryption is happening on your local machine. There is one, uh, one parity node running on your local machine that gets uh, the keys inserted and the data and encrypts the document on your local machine. The keys itself, or the not, not even the keys, but the, the information to restore that key is stored in the private, uh, in the secret store. And this is what we what we're doing uh, under the hood. We um, take that document ID, assign it with your uh, with your public key. No, we, we sign it with your private key. This is done by the parity node. This will generate a server key. From that server key, I hope everyone can see. Uh, from this server key, we derive a document key. And this this uh, is also an answer to your question. So there is. There's this parity node that is running locally, and the secret store that is that is not running locally. And so we, we generate a server key in the, um, on the secret store. We generate a document key uh, on your local parity node. Then we store that key that was created in the secret store. That's this one. And we uh, re encrypt the document itself. This will give us. Uh, the hex representation of the of the encryption, and then we can publish it to to a metadata store or whatever. This is an ordinary parity client. This is an ordinary parity client. So that's the that's the process of uh, encryption, and this is the process of decryption. We. Uh, uh, sign again the document key with another with a with a uh, <coughs> private private key of the consumer. We would uh, use this to retrieve the the key fragments from the secret store. That's this one here. Then the secret store checks against one of our keeper uh, contracts <coughs> if this person is really allowed to decrypt this document. And then the keys will be will be returned, or the, the portions of the key will be returned, and then the document will be decrypted. And this is also connected to, to one of those questions: How is the keeper connected to it? Uh, the secret store has a connection to the keeper, and every purchase we we do, we, we register in the keeper, and the secret store asks the keeper notes. Hey, is this person who wants to get those keys allowed to get those keys? And if the, the smart contract and the keeper says, I don't think so, then you shall not decrypt. So you cannot the keys, you cannot get the keys without um, being allowed in the blockchain. So basically, we put we put a layer of uh, of security on top of uh, of the blockchain or a side of the blockchain, because what we try to do. Oh, we, what we did was we implemented all this stuff into the blockchain itself and every byte that you store on the blockchain costs you money and costs someone else money because you have to you have to deal with that data in the blockchain and um, secret store is uh, for us a, is an optimization of uh, of blockchain utilization so we reduce data in the blockchain and put it somewhere else where it, where it is as secure it is in the blockchain it's not in the blockchain, but it's still it's still connected to it. Questions? Cool. Like I said, the the repository is open source, so you can you can git clone it and change it and use it, whatever. Uh, you can connect us on uh, LinkedIn. You can um, 
get in charge with us on Gitter or whatever uh, medium you want. Uh, if you have more questions, just just ask me. You said a few minutes ago that you were running a setup with three nodes. Yeah. So is that enough to be business in full color and running three nodes? Right now it is, because we only we know uh, we own that node. Okay. And like I said, it's not it's not a public cluster yet. It, it's yeah, but it's, it's three enough. It is to be business in full. It is. Color? There is um, in in the secret store configuration, there is a there is a threshold that you can can specify, and it has to be um, the number of nodes minus one. So in this case, uh, two nodes of this cluster has to approve that I am allowed to decrypt. Okay. And if we have I don't know one thousand nodes, then this threshold could be eight hundred. So eight hundred nodes would uh, would have to approve that I am allowed to decrypt. Okay. But yeah, three is enough at this at this point. Is the, is the secret key split between those three entities? Yes, it is. Only those three entities. Yes. Which means if I have a one twenty bit key, it goes with the four bit <coughs> security with all those parties, right? Yeah. So which means if if I am Byzantine for tolerant and just one of out of three is malicious, I've already lost forty bits. Yeah, in this case, yes. <laughs> so for a productive environment, we would need more nodes than than three. Yeah. Even if even if you have a million, you leak some bits of entropy of your key already, right? Yeah. There is a there is a, a good documentation about it in one of our repositories, where the whole concept of uh, of secret store in combination with the parity notes is is described. And there is a there is also a description of which nodes hold holds what portion of the data. This is a pretty new feature and a feature in in parity. I think they have released it like mid of this year. So yeah, I don't want to stretch it more than than I should. So you can become an uh, Ocean Ambassador. You can join us, uh, us on uh, on GitHub and on LinkedIn and whatever uh, medium you want. Yeah, and I'm. There are no questions anymore. What does suggestion routing mean? Sorry. The third bullet point. What does suggestion routing mean? Oh, that's a that's a good question. Uh, you can. Um, we have a bounty program that you can. Um, yeah that you can work with. You can suggest bounties that we would uh, uh, yeah, put as a bounty for Ocean tokens. Um, so one developer could, could take that bounty and implement parts of Ocean that are not implemented yet. And we have a, we have a program for yeah, suggesting those bounties. It's also in GitHub. So there, the GitHub uh, documentation is pretty good. <laughs> It's called Open Waters. Yeah. Okay. Okay.